Good evening. Here we are again tonight, burning the hot end at both ends. I've got all of the Stooges doing their work tonight, and I'm doing an unboxing of a hot end, plus four hot end, and I wanted to do it in front of everybody so everybody would know that I just opened up this box. So here we go. Here we are. Chidi, form your reality. This is a freshly purchased hot end, bi metal hot end, off of Amazon. And I am opening it up for the first time tonight. We are going to check out the ceramic heat break and see if it's tight, loose or just plain horrible. Okay, this is what you get when you open up a box. You can see this. Now, folks at Chidi, it would be nice if you could actually put on the box, whether it's a bimetal, whatever, brass, copper, okay? Be nice, just label that thing. It helps. All right. Once again, my arthritic fingers are not doing too well tonight, but this is what you get here. You get a little instructions that tells you to pay attention to the 2x2 JST connector when you put it into the print head. Oh, look at this. Pristine hot end. Now, I just opened this up. I'll set this aside. Something doesn't look right about that. I don't know. Can you all see that? I'll try to zoom in. Okay. Doesn't look right, does it? Does it look straight? Or is that just a sock that's fooling my eyes here? Well, I'm going to pull the sock off. And once again, oh, that looks a little better. Maybe the sock was kind of throwing things off for me. Now, if you'll notice, this is by metal hot end has a darker tip to it. Can you all see that? The tungsten carbide tips are a little bit lighter in color. They're a darker gray. But this one's very deep black. And that tells you it's a bimetal hot end. Now as in my previous videos, I pointed out to everyone these lateral pins here. I'm going to try to zoom in on them. You see that right there? What we're going to do today is we're going to add a little step to what we did before. Okay. Now, <clears throat> on the harness, you'll notice these little steel clamps that they wrap around to stabilize the harness and this little it's a little metal stamping and then it's held in place here by a screw sorry we'll try to see if we can get that in the camera so what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen up that that strap there on both sides My trusty little pliers here, my needle nose pliers. All right. That's one. Let's see if we can get the other one. I may need to get a knife in there <clears throat> or something 
Kids, don't try this at home. So what you want to do is you want to get that knife in there, sharp object, work it, work it out. Okay. Bend it a little bit. Let's see if we can get some pliers in. Oh, all right, success. Okay, now that we've got the harness kind of free, okay, we've got that wire free. We don't want to put too much pressure on that wire, okay? You'll mess yourself up there. All right, so <clears throat> now I'm going to see if my little trusty Allen wrench here will try to loosen up these set screws. Oh, that's nice and tight from the factory. How about that? Good job, folks. Okay. We'll get to the other one. Now, in my last video, we just loosened these up just, just a little bit here to, you know, get some space. We'll come over here. We'll do the next one. These are a little loose, though. That's not good. These weren't as tight as the ones on the other side. Okay. Now, I think I've got it. Well, I don't have it loose enough. Well, let's go. Let's go a little bit more. Okay. I'll zoom out a little bit. I don't want to take those screws all the way out just yet. Okay. We don't want to do that. Now we're still a little tight back there. Now when I loosen up that nozzle, you'll see it freed up. Okay. That's good and loose. Now we'll go to our nozzle. <coughs> Use our 7 millimeter socket. We'll loosen that up a little bit. And when I got it loose, what I want to do is I want to use my fingers to feel. I feel a little squeak there. But hey, it feels kind of, yeah, it feels, doesn't feel bad. Looks like they may have lined it up. But now, when you notice, now that I've got that wire harness freed up, okay, I can slide that nozzle back and forth in there. That whole ceramic heater is now loose. And I'm gradually coming out of there with this nozzle. All right, now be very careful. We got some boron nitride paste on there. Not a whole lot, but I guess it would be enough. I'll set that down. Now I wanna show you something. See that? That's really loose there with the set screws all loosened up. This is what I was talking about earlier. When this ceramic heater is not lined up very well at the factory with the hole in the heat sink, we put a lot of stress on this ceramic heat break. Okay, by opening up this fresh box, I want to I'd like for you all to do this too. When you buy a nozzle and a hot end assembly from them, check it. Check it with this method. I'm gonna put a little more boron nitride paste on there. I don't like that. I need I need a little bit more. That's not it's not something I like. I'm gonna put a little little dab right there. I'm gonna work it around. Some people just like to put the boron nitride paste down on the, <coughs> the table and just roll it on a paper towel. But I think that's, that's good. All right, we'll put the cap on. And we'll screw it back in place. Now I don't wanna, I don't wanna get a lot of that boron nitride paste on the threads, okay? I'm gonna try to go in there as, 
easy as I can without getting that boron nitride paste on the threads in the ceramic uh, heater. We don't like that. We, what we want to do is we want to put it all the way up in there in the heat sink so that we can get good heat transference. Now, I am not feeling any t anything here. This is loosey-goosey. Not like in my first video. Okay. Now, I don't have it tightened up all the way. I can feel a little give there. All right. So, now what I want to do is in my last video, we had you tighten up the set screws. We'll pick a set screw here. If I can find it, there we go. We'll tighten it down. As far as we can go. There we go. I don't want it too tight just yet. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to go to the opposite side. All right. And I want to tighten this set screw down. Now, why do I do that? Well, if I tighten the two set screws on the one side, then I'm going to bias that pressure with those screws. It's just like putting a, a wheel on a, on a car. Okay. Now, I've got that diagonal tightened up. Now I can come back here on this other side. Tighten this down. Okay. And I'm going to come back on this side, opposite side, diagonally. And tighten that down. Now notice that in my last video, <clears throat> I didn't use any, uh, I used blue Loctite. Okay, I didn't do it here. Okay, I just wanted to show you folks um, how we want to make sure to ensure this nozzle uh, heat uh, heater and heat sink are all lined up. That's just, this is the goal. Okay, I'll come back here off camera, and then I'll apply that blue Loctite to those set screws uh, to ensure that they won't back out. I had some uh, set screw completely back out on the stainless steel. Uh, hot end that I had. So now that we've got that done, we'll come back and we'll fold our clamps back over our wire harness just so really easy. We don't want to we don't want to really bend it too hard and too fast too violently. Let's just kind of work it back down in place. Okay, to ensure that that thing's going to be right on target. Okay, I got a little bit more here on this side. Let's wrap it around. Just like that. Okay, and we should be fully clamped there. So there you have it. You've just checked the hot end assembly for any kind of tension on that ceramic heat break. I was surprised to find that one that I unboxed here freshly tonight in front of you all um, was lined up very well. Now, some of you all may get some like that and then some you may get where this angle here is just too steep and it puts way too much pressure on that uh, ceramic heat break. So I'll come back and I'll tighten up my my nozzle. I'm not going to crank it down. I'm going to wait till I get this thing into the machine and get it up to temp. And then I'll wait to put the sock on once we get it into the machine. I don't like to look at that sock. Do you? Do you all like that? See there? That's not a good thing. But sometimes you'll get these silicone socks like that. They're not going to be perfect coming out of the factory. But it's it's workable. It's, it's doable. All right, folks. That's uh, all for tonight. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this. If you've learned something, please uh, leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, and I'll have more videos coming out. 
um, my channel officially goes live next month um, where I handle heated chamber printing and a few other things devoted to the Plus 4, the Q1 Pro, and the X-Max 3. Y'all have a good night. This is Hillbilly Engineer signing off.